So the balanced chemical equation gives us relationships for moles of reactants and products. And this is important because individual atoms and molecules are way too small to, for us to deal with. And yet we understand that because these are the smallest particles of matter, that they react in these exact ratios, just like Lego bricks. You, you're, there's no uncertainty. There, in a water molecule, there are exactly two hydrogen atoms and exactly one oxygen atom in every little unit of water. But practically, those quantities are way too small to deal with. And the mole, being a ginormous unit, brings it up to a size where we can actually see it and measure it. So we're going to pretty much do everything in terms of moles. So the balanced chemical equation can help us to predict the moles of product that a given number of moles of reactants will yield. And this is very practical stuff. So if we're decomposing water, and we want to know how much hydrogen gas and how much oxygen gas we will get if we decompose a certain amount of water. So this equation tells us that if we have two moles of water, we'll get two moles of hydrogen and two moles of oxygen. Because when we look at the individual molecules, two molecules of water would give us four molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. And all we're doing when we're talking about moles is we're multiplying everything by Avogadro's number and we're saying mole, just like we did with dozen. Well, if that's true, two moles t gives us two moles and one mole, then it's also true that if we doubled that, we would get, pointing at the wrong thing, we would get, f if we doubled it, then we would get four molecules, giving four molecules and two molecules. That's just taking those coefficients and multiplying them they're still in the same ratio. 4 to 4 to 2 is the same ratio as 2 to 2 to 1. So if we started with 4 moles of water, we'd get 4 moles of hydrogen and 2 moles of oxygen. So we can use that balanced chemical equation to essentially convert from moles of water to moles of hydrogen. And we do that by using a mole ratio. It tells us how many moles of water is equivalent to how many moles of hydrogen, or whatever we're interested in. So the mole ratio allows us to convert to moles of one substance, which could be a reactant or a product. Convert from that to moles of another substance, whichever one we're interested in. So there's actually a lot of information in this balanced chemical equation. So let's look at this equation. This is a messy equation, but they balanced it for us, so we don't have to worry about that. How many moles of sodium fluoride, this guy, would be produced if 3.5 moles of sodium is reacted with excess that guy, Na2SiF6? We didn't learn how to name that. Well, if we had 4 moles of sodium, how many moles of sodium fluoride would we get? Six, right? Four moles of this gives us six moles of that. But now they're saying, well, what if we only had three and a half moles? I can't remember where the slides are going. Okay, the slides are going nowhere. That's fine. I'll write it. What's the relationship? Four moles of sodium is equivalent to six moles of NaF, sodium fluoride. If I react four moles of sodium, and assuming plenty of everything else, I will make six moles of sodium fluoride. This is an equivalent statement. This is a mole ratio. We could also write this as a ratio, four moles of sodium per six moles of sodium fluoride, or we can flip that upside down and say we can produce six moles of sodium fluoride for every four moles of sodium that we react. It's like saying I'm going to get one sandwich for every two slices of bread, right? 
So these look like conversion factors, don't they? So if I have 3.50 moles of sodium, and I want to find out how many moles of sodium fluoride I can make, I want to multiply by moles of sodium fluoride and divide by moles of sodium. Why? Dimensional analysis. Units working out. I need the relationship between them, and I get that from the balanced chemical equation. So we already wrote it out here. So I'm going to use this guy over here because this has moles of sodium fluoride on the top. So it's times 6 divided by 4. So 3.5 times 6 divided by 4 is 5.25 moles of sodium fluoride. And then we ask ourselves, well, does that make sense? Is that a reasonable answer? If I had 4 moles of sodium, I could make 6 moles of sodium fluoride. But I have three and a half. I have a little less than four. So if I'm starting with less than four, then I would expect to end up with less than six, right? I certainly couldn't get more. And this is a little less than six, so that's reasonable. The common mistake is to get your numbers here upside down, and then things will go kind of crazy. Any questions? Let's do a quick uh, sandwich example here. I'm going to leave out the word slices because there's just not enough room. So our recipe was two bread plus three meat plus two cheese equals one sandwich. Ah. So what if I have 42 pieces of meat? I've got lots of bread, I've got lots of cheese, I have 42 pieces of meat. How many sandwiches can I make? Well, what's the relationship between sandwiches and meat? I get one sandwich for every three pieces of meat, right? So if I take 42 and divide by 3, I'll get 14 sandwiches. See, 14, 42 divided by 3 is a number that most, I didn't do it in my head, I used my calculator. That's not an obvious number, but that's the process. If I, if I say, oh, I've got nine pieces of meat, how many sandwiches? We can do that one in our heads. Oh, well, it's three, three pieces of meat for a sandwich, and so you can make three. How are you doing that in your head? Well, you're doing this process, you just don't know it. You're saying, I can get one sandwich for every three pieces of meat. Nine divided by three is three, three sandwiches. So we understand this concept um, just from life experience, mostly. If, if I have 10 pieces of bread, how many sandwiches can you make? Five, right? Because it's two, two pieces of bread. We can do that. We understand that. When we start talking about molecules and all these funny formulas, and we throw that crazy unit mole in there, you all lose your heads, right? Don't let your brain go out the window, okay? If you can understand that 10 pieces of bread will make five sandwiches, then you can do the rest of this too. 
It's just going to take a little practice thinking about it. And go ahead and relate it back to sandwiches if you need to. That's absolutely fine. Does anybody, anybody have any questions? Let's go back to this example. Propane. C3H8, a common fuel used in heating homes in rural areas. A lot of the outlying uh, houses around here have propane. Predict how many moles of carbon dioxide are formed when 3.74 moles of propane are burned in excess oxygen according to this equation. So let's think about you know, when you burn propane, and uh, that's also the fuel that um, you use in your gas grill if you don't have a, a hardwired line in. So what is the, the thing that limits the burning? It's the propane, right? The oxygen's coming from the air. There's essentially an unlimited supply of oxygen. And we're going to talk a little bit later about which one is limiting and how that all works. And so for now, it may, may seem a little odd that they keep talking about excess something. But you think about making sandwiches or, or making any recipe. Um, you know, if, if I'm going to make buttermilk pancakes for my kids, the thing that we run out of first is the buttermilk, right? Because we don't keep that around. But there's plenty of flour in the cupboard. And so there's something that runs out. So what they're doing here when they say excess is they're saying don't worry about the other stuff. We're just looking at the propane here, plenty of oxygen, don't worry about that one. So they're saying that we have 3.74 moles of propane, 3.74 moles. And they're asking us how many moles of carbon dioxide can you make or would be formed. This is just like the sandwich question. Nine pieces of meat, how many sandwiches can you make? Here it's 3.74 moles of propane. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look for that ratio from the balanced chemical equation, but we'll get, get our units in first. 3.74 moles of propane. And that's also something we didn't learn how to name. That's organic. We want to know moles of carbon dioxide because that's what the question is asking. How many moles of carbon dioxide? And we want to divide by moles of propane because we want that unit to disappear. So that unit is going to cancel. And that will leave us with the unit that we want. We need some numbers here. And for those numbers, we have to look no farther than this equation. This tells us that one mole of propane would produce three moles of carbon dioxide. We get three moles of carbon dioxide for every one mole of propane that's burned. Three moles of carbon dioxide for one mole of propane. These numbers are straight from the balanced chemical equation. So here we're saying it's 3 moles, and that is what goes down here, 3 moles. This would be 1 mole, and that's coming down here, straight out of the equation. So then we take and we do the math. 3.74 times 3, 11.22, wrong color, 11.22 moles of CO2. Now with significant figures we should really round that to 11.2. The, the numbers here in the equation, those coefficients, are exact numbers. Okay? When you make a sandwich, you don't use two and a half pieces of bread. 
or 1.75 pieces of bread. You use two pieces, right? That's a counting number. The chemical reaction ultimately goes down to the atomic and molecular level where we're dealing with particles and it's exact. So exactly one molecule of this will produce exactly three molecules of that. So these ratios, when we do mole ratios, you just ignore them for significant figures. Most of the time, what will happen is whatever number you were given, you look at the number of significant figures there, that one has three, that's how many you should have in your answer. That'll work like 99.9% .9 of the time. So any questions? It's dimensional analysis. It tells you, am I supposed to multiply by three or divide by three? You don't have to worry about that. You put the units in, and the units will tell you what to do. So let's just make up some more examples, because we have some time, and we don't want to go on if we don't um, need to. We're on track. We've got plenty of time. Um, let's see. Think of something. This one gets used a lot. Nitrogen and hydrogen reacting to form ammonia. And then it needs to be balanced. So I'm looking at this, and there's two nitrogens here. And there's only one over there. So I'll try putting a two here. Nitrogens are fine. Over here on the right now, I've got two times three. I have six hydrogens. And over here, I only have two. If I multiply this by 3, then I'll get 6. So I'm not going to write out long sentences. Um, given 6.5 moles of nitrogen, how many moles of ammonia? The equation tells us one mole of nitrogen gives us two moles of ammonia, right? And so we can kind of think about this a little bit. Well, you know, whatever number of, of nitrogen I have, I'm going to get twice as many of this. But let's write it out. 6.5 moles of nitrogen. What unit do I want on the top? What am I trying to find out? NH3, moles of NH3. And then what unit do I put on the bottom? Moles of N2. Because I want moles of N2 to cancel out. And that goes back to the idea from math that anything divided by itself is 1. When you multiply something by 1, it doesn't change. So something divided by itself just poof goes away. Then we need this relationship, and the numbers here come from the equation. What number is in front of NH3 in the equation? It's a 2. So I write a 2 in front of NH3. And what number is in front of the nitrogen? It's a 1. We don't write 1s, but it's a 1. And down here, if you don't like to write 1s, you don't have to write the 1, because dividing by 1 won't change it. But most students would prefer to see a number there. So we get 6.5 times 2, divided by 1, which should give us 13 moles of ammonia. Let's do another one. Let's, um, what if I had 1.7 times 10 to the 4th? Well, let's make that negative 4. 10 to the minus 4 moles of um, hydrogen. How many moles of ammonia could I make? Mm. 
moles of hydrogen, and the question is how many moles of ammonia? So that means we want to multiply by moles of ammonia. And then we would divide by moles of hydrogen. Now this number, that's kind of a funky number, right? Scientific notation, kind of weird looking, not like these kind of normal looking numbers we've seen. That's okay. It works with any numbers. So we get our units in. For, this is the mole ratio. And we look at the equation. What's in front of NH3? It's a 2. And what's in front of H2? 3. So then I want to write 3 down here. And that's all there is to it. I'm not going to have space to write my answer. That's okay. So 1.7 EE minus 4 times 2 divided by 3. 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of ammonia. And now let's look at both of these answers and ask ourselves if they make sense. Here, 6.5 moles of nitrogen got us 13 moles of ammonia. When we look at this equation, we see that we're going to get twice as much ammonia as we start out with nitrogen. So that makes sense, right? Here we're starting with hydrogen and going to ammonia. We start with 3 moles of hydrogen, we only get 2 moles. So in terms of numbers of molecules, it's less. And so we expect this answer to be less than what we started with, and that's the case. Any questions?